Hello and a pleasant welcome to another episode of Situation Report on Live TV. Situation Report brings you 30 minutes contemporary happenings about Man River, Liberia. My name is Yekezi Zobel, anchoring this edition of the program and training stories we follow in today say more than 750 ghost names discovered on the payroll of the, of the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare by the Internal Audit Agency. Deputy Minister for Public Affairs at the Ministry of Information, Culture and Tourism expresses personal view about President Weah's recent statement towards journalist Jonathan Pelele says the BBC correspondent is traumatized. And the National Identification Registry to begin registration of all government employees and pensioners. We're following all of these stories plus a lot more. Once more, my name is Yekezi Zobel. Ask you to please invite someone to view along as we take this short interval. To be right back. LIB Africa, what's up? It's your boy Cozy Kamikaze, aka the King of Liberia. You in tune to the hottest show right now, Light TV. Buh! Pleasant welcome back to Situation Report on Live TV. And straight into our development, the Internal Audit Agency of Liberia has discovered more than 750 ghost names on the payroll of the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare. The discovery was made for a recent audit by the Internal Audit Agency. The Director General of the Internal Audit Agency says the government will save more than 82 million Liberian dollars in basic salaries and 1.7 million USD in allowances annually if the names are deleted. Emmanuel Yeshua, speaking at Nikkei's press briefing, commends the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare for its cooperation and global funding for financing the exercise. To help the Ministry of Health clean up its payroll. We conducted a hair count of the Ministry's payroll affecting all public health institutions in Liberia. Mm -hmm. The result of that audit were very impressive. And as Fana and Development Planning Minister, the Honorable Simon D. Toy Jr. told you a fortnight ago, when he mounted this podium, we were able to discover more than 750 ghost names, which we recommended to be deleted for the payroll. And this would save the government more than 82 billion Liberian dollars in business salary and 1.7 million United States dollars in allowances yearly. As we speak to you at this movement, the Ministry of Health has started implementing the recommendation. We want to use this podium or medium to thank former Minister Brennan Down and her team for requesting this audit and for helping to source funding for it. 
Their cooperation was exceptional, and we want to commend the global funds for providing the resources for the exercise. In the same token, we also want to thank the new leadership at the MOH for the exceptional cooperation in implementing the audit recommendations advanced by the IA. Today, as of the 21st of March, the 750 names were submitted to the CSA for immediate deletion. So we're going to show you that the government, as of March, has started to save the 1.7 million analysis dollar in allowances and a $2 million Liberian dollar in business salary for people that are receiving salary but don't work for the government. One of the, one of the specific things to the IT minister at the time, uh, the CMO, Dr. Tete, the Deputy Minister for Administration, Honorable Howard, and the Deputy Minister for Plenty, Honorable Tule, they were very forceful with the team at the Ministry of Health to implement the audit recommendation. Additionally, the Director General of the Internal Audit Agency has considered 1,745 names on the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare payroll as questionable. According to him, the RAA is working in concert with the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare for clarifications on those names. Speak today, we have a additional 1,745 names that will still consider questionable. Our team at the RAA and the Ministry of Health are working together to clarify. So there will be additional names to the 750 that have been on the payroll as we speak to you. As a result of the success story for the MOH audit, we are pleased to report that the President was very impressed and has directed the Ministry of Finance to provide additional resources for audits of ministries and agencies, other ministries and agencies. For the first time in the history of the IAA, we have received direct funding for the conduct of additional payroll audits, beginning with the Ministry of Education. And we are pleased to report that the exercise started April 2, 2018. And our auditors are currently across the country. We are conducting on the spot haircut audit of payrolls of the Ministry of Education, which will affect all schools across the country. This exercise it is expected to last for one month. It is intended to account for teachers and school workers who are on government payroll. And it will help to clean up the system so as to provide employment opportunities for deserving volunteer teachers in the government of Liberia proposed agenda. After the MOE, continuing on the availability of additional resources, which will then ensure the IA will further undertake audit of the Ministry of Agriculture, Justice, Internal Affairs in the next fiscal period. The National Identification Registry says it will soon begin the registration of all government employees and pensioners. According to the Director General of the NRR, J. Tianangwe, this is in keeping with the Memorandum of Understanding between the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning, Civil Service Agency and the National Identification Registry. Nangwe indicated that when completed, the government of Liberia will save about 10 million USD for the next fiscal year. The National Identification Registry has started the biometric registration of all government employees and pensioners. We began this work about three weeks ago at the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning. And we have now moved on to other ministries. We began at their office on Broad Street. This work is in keeping with a memorandum of understanding between the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning, the Civil Service Agency, and the National Identification Registry. We expect to complete the entire payroll of the government of Liberia for all those that receive a monthly paycheck, a monthly pension, or a monthly allowance, consisting of about 80,000 employees and 14,000 pensioners by the end of June of this year. This is something that has not been done before, despite several efforts. This means that it is a challenge. But if we are successful at it this time, it is estimated that the government of Liberia will save about US $10 million, about US $10 million this next fiscal year alone. 
If you continue to sustain that over the next five years, the government could save in excess of 50 million United States dollars. Everyone who receives a monthly salary, a monthly allowance, or a monthly pension from the government of Liberia must register with the NIR during this period. In a few days from now, we will announce the schedule for this process across the country. The schedule will inform employees and pensioners of the dates and places where the registration will take place. This project is an important part of President George Manawiya's 150-day pro-poor plan. What this will do is clean the payroll further, in addition to other efforts that are taking place with other agencies of the government. So that Meanwhile, the Mr. Nambi added that the National Identification Registry has enrolled into a system 9,012 people. He also disclosed the institution's plan to increase its capacity by opening other centers in all parts of the country. So, April 4, 2018, we have enrolled into the system 9,012 people. The current enrollment process is a pilot project on which we are using only a few machines to test our, our, our work. We are about to increase our capacity and open other centers in all 15 counties across the country, thanks to the support of the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning. At full capacity, we will be enrolling about 6,000 people per day. That means the work we have, all the enrollment that we have done since November is about two days' work for us. Today, I want to inform our people that Liberia's National Identification Registry is an institution that is worthy of respect and trust. My team is working very hard, day and night, to build and, and operate a world-class registry. And we count on the support of the people of Liberia because we cannot do this alone. We need the help of everyone for us to meet the high standards that we have set. We want to assure you that we are doing everything possible to carefully screen applicants before enrolling people into the system. Also remember, and this is important to remember, we are registering Liberians and residents of Liberia. So we are registering people as well who are not citizens of Liberia but who reside in Liberia. Our screening process has many aspects, some of which we will not discuss publicly. But among some of the things that we can discuss publicly that we'd like to share with you are one, we require certain documents to support application for the citizen ID card. These documents include a birth certificate, a voter ID card, a passport, or a naturalization certificate. Two, each applicant must first complete an interview by an immigration officer. We work very closely with the Liberia Immigration Service in doing our registration work. Therefore, they have assigned officers to us to help us with the screening process. Three, we also do our own interview and screening of the documents before we can approve anyone for, for enrollment. And four, after the applicant leaves, we do other things to verify the information before finally approving the application for, for, for uh, entry into the system. Well, he's the um, Director General of the National Identification Registry, uh, Mr. Tia Nangwe there, he spoke today at the Ministry of Information, Culture and Tourism in a press briefing. Well, if you just join us, it's a reminder that you view in Situation Report live on Live TV. Situation Report brings you 30 minutes comprehensive presentation of all of the major current events about Monrovia, Liberia. My name is Yekezi Zubel, anchoring this episode of the program. And top stories following today say more than 750 ghost names discovered on the payroll of the Ministry of uh, Health and social welfare uh, by the Internal Audit Agency. Deputy Minister for Public Affairs at the Ministry of Information, Culture and Tourism expresses personal view about President Weah's recent statement towards journalist Jonathan Pelede, says the BBC journalist is traumatized. 
and the National Identification Registry to begin registration of all government employees across the country. At this juncture, I would like to take a break to be right back. It's the Caps Entertainment Show, the best of the best of all entertainment shows. Get all the latest gossip and entertainment news of what's trending in the world of Liberian entertainment. Enjoy 100% Liberian entertainment on Caps every Friday at 8 p.m. with Paul and Jojo live only on Light Television. The Dominion Christian Fellowship Center, Asa Winger Global Ministry, Claraton Branch. Dominion, a true Bible believing church where we speak nothing but the truth. I know you are lying. God has another plan for your life. At the Dominion Christian Fellowship Center, we show you the way to choose salvation, deliverance, and miracle. If they are not concerned about improving your life, moving your life to the next level, but rather for you to be used on that roof as an instrument of destruction, they are not happy. You can find part of our divine worship service or hour of encounter every Sunday with your humble servant, Reverend Clarence T. Payne. Yes, it's a back to school offer. Case Connor returns to your TV screen on Light TV. Case Connor brings together children between the ages of 5 to 12 years. This program is geared towards teaching children through exciting educational activities with fun. Case Connor also offers children the opportunity to participate in group presentations, setting the platform for aspiring future careers. Registration is in progress and will be done on first come, first serve basis. Registration is free with new and interesting features poems, a recitation, Bible verses, games, and story time with Auntie Louisa. For contact, please contact us at email broadcastlight at gmail.com or call 0770-142-765 or 0886-529-605. Better still, 0777-533-850. Light <laughs> Kore de ajo a bit on the nenuim opo TV kulo ete take up one jeti light TV neti dead do neti new do ene dem ne kule eno wete eno wete de ete moti ba kulo ba di 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 ba di de jeo di de jeo di de jeo yezwa no po moti keni tonya ay la bira no yamu.
pleasant welcome back from that river. Deputy Minister for Public Affairs at the Ministry of Information, Culture and Tourism, Minket, has expressed his personal view about President Weah's recent statement towards journalist Jonathan Pelede. President George Weah responding to journalist Pelede's inquiry in a UN press conference recently said the BBC's correspondent was against him due his human rights advocacy in the country. Journalist P. Leader following the president's statement has reportedly applied for political asylum and left the country for the U.S. stating the issue of insecurity. But according to Minister Fagon, the president's statement to the BBC's correspondent was his candid opinion and not a threat. Minister Fagon believes that Mr. P. Leader, as an old journalist in the country, is traumatized from past instances where journalists were hunted for performing their duties. Candid opinion of Mr. Pele. He said when I was fighting for human rights, you were against that. That's his candid opinion. And this is Mr. Pele's own writing. All right? And so he cannot go against what he wrote. Uh, there is a difference between physical threat and verbal threat compared to a person's opinion. I, I do have here a record that shows that Mr. Pelele wrote an open letter um, to, we have here Pelele open letter to First Lady Claudia and Vice President Howard Taylor. Now, if the records that you look here, you're looking at here is correct, then of course, the last part right here, you can see I, I number it, it's number one, Mr. Pelele writes, and I'll read, quote, Liberia has some terrible memories about the way journalists have been treated by governments, and I really hope that history cannot repeat itself on me. So you can clearly see that Mr. Pelele is traumatized from the past, which is understandable, but a new sheriff is in town. He can rest assured he's free to go and free to come. He's Deputy Minister for Public Affairs at the Ministry of Information, Cultural and Tourism. Lefty head Gabriel Yenka has described as classic insult to the president call by some members of the public to reverse his appointment as head of that institution. Some political pundits claim that the appointment of Mr. Yenka at Lefty was illegal as the tenure of the former head of the institution was not completed. But according to Yenka, his appointment is constitutional and unquestionable. Long time. The key man over our president. You see, a liti is not a political playground for you for presidential appointment. That was the most classic insult. Within a committee of nations, if they have an ambassador here by this time, I will have urged the foreign minister to the instruction of the president to declare them personal non grata and expel them from the country. You must be concerned about the process that you ascribe to. You did not ascribe to a process to wash over our constitutional process. You said you are a watchdog institution that should ensure transparency and integrity within the extractive sector. The appointment that was made was constitutional. Nobody was stealing diamond. Nobody was signing a contract undermining, you know, the establishment of a company. That's what you sound out to. Sometimes when you guys speak across the ocean, let's take our time to lose our analysis. They're not only restricted to knowledge. Some of us here, some of you can do better. Some of you. I remember the last time when we spoke on that before, there were the same people who said, in the Senate, there was a speaker. So Labrador's Senate is headed by a speaker. And we question them, go and change your report. If you make such elementary errors, we are afraid that some of the things you are reporting on may not even be true. Because just a punch on the uh, internet will bring the Labrador Constitution and will tell you that the, 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 the Senate of Liberia is headed by the vice president of the republic, not a speaker. But that is global witness for us. You know, when they cough, we are expected to catch cold. 
Unfortunately, they did not tell Theresa May, or Prime Minister, that Brexit will be an economic catastrophe. But it's sitting in the UK. President Donald Trump fired James Comey, FBI director, who had 10 years tenure into his 10 years. You can confirm that. Just look at the, the, the stuff there. J A M E S is James. C O M E Y is Comey. And check a 10 year tenure granted to him. Fired in the 10 year. Seven plus years left. Well, that's all the time we have for you on this episode of Say Toys and Report on Live TV. Many thanks for your very role, but before departing you, let's recap major stories we've been following. More than 750 ghost names discovered on the payroll of the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare by the Internal Audit Agency. Deputy Minister for Public Affairs at the Ministry of Information, Culture and Tourism expresses personal view about President Weah's recent statement towards journalist Jonathan Pellidier, says the BBC correspondent is traumatized. And the National Identification Registry to begin registration of all government employees across the country. Once more, many thanks for your very role and thanks to all of our reporters, editors, and our technical team for making this edition of Situation Report a success. Join us tomorrow at 1 p.m. for another production on this station. Once more, my name is Yekezi Zobel. For more news and information on this station, you can log on to our website at www.lighttvonline.com or better still, find us on YouTube at Light Communications Investment. Yekezi Zobel. Bidding your blessing for that.